Hey, this is Ed Ferrari from Foundry, and I thought I would do a quick refresher on Mesh Fusion uh, because I just released uh, a couple videos uh, that are a little bit intermediate. So I just want to make sure everyone's up to speed. So I have this sphere here, and it's selected in Items mode. And if I press Shift Tab, we'll make sure that we're in Capmo Clark Subdivision mode. And that's the ideal mesh type for Mesh Fusion. Now Mesh Fusion works with other mesh types, but it ends up converting uh, regular standard polygon meshes to Capmo Clark anyway. So uh, it's best to work in Capmo Clark mode uh, to begin with. So I'm going to make this sphere uh, the primary item in my Fusion setup. And in a few minutes, we'll talk about what that actually means. So I'll press Control F to bring up my Fusion Pi menu. And I'll click on New Fusion. And that brings up this little floating window. I'll give this new Fusion a name. We'll call it Fuse underscore zero one. And I'll leave everything at default. I like to work with absolute strip width. So having that enabled is perfect. And then I'll click on New Fusion with Selected Meshes. Now let's have a look and see what happened. So our uh, sphere now has a green wireframe. And to see that better, I'm just going to toggle off the Fusion item. So here is our green wireframe that matches the green highlight in the item list. The color green in Mesh Fusion represents a primary uh, fusion operation. That means it's going to be additive. So if I convert other mesh items to be primary items, they're going to be added to this sphere. So it's an additive Boolean operation. Now, there are two other colors that will represent other operations that we'll get to in a minute. So I'm just going to make my fusion item visible again. And this fusion item is the actual uh, sum or culmination of uh, the fusion operations uh, being uh, put together. So I'm going to uh, make my plane A visible. It's this bent kind of plane, this curved plane. And I want this plane to trim uh, this sphere. So the plane is going to trim away the sphere. So I'll click on the plane in items mode. And I'm just going to left mouse button click and drag it onto the sphere. And when this menu pops up, I'll choose Fusion Apply Subtraction. Now the plane has this magenta color, and you can see it's actually cutting the sphere where the plane and the sphere intersect. So magenta is the color for subtractive trim. There's another trim type uh, called Intersect, which we'll get to uh, in a few minutes. So let's say I want to subtract something else from this uh, sphere. I have uh, an item called Sphere A Inner, and if I make that visible, you can see it's a uh, copy of the larger sphere, our primary. So I'm going to actually, uh, so what I would want to do is click on that inner sphere and drag it onto the outer sphere, but as you can see, I can't really get to it. So I'm going to use the item list to help me out. So I'll left mouse button click on the Sphere A Inner, and I'll just drag it onto the green primary wireframe. And when I get this menu, I'll choose Fusion Apply Subtraction. And now you can see we're actually getting a hollowing effect. So if you want to see what your Fusion looks like a little bit more clearly, you can press Control F to bring up the Fusion Pi menu. And you can use uh, the rightmost option, which is Toggle Source Visibility. So doing that allows you to really see uh, what's happening with your Fusion item. Now Fusion is uh, procedural, so if I come over to this Sphere A Inner and press R, and I'm actually going to do this in Polygons mode, so I'll press 3 to go into Polygons mode, R for scale, and if I start scaling this, you can see the Fusion item updates. So we can make this sphere uh, very small, or we can make it uh, very large. Now one thing that I like to uh, work with is a feature of Mesh Fusion called Deferred Updates. So if I click on the Fusion item, uh, right here it says Deferred Update. If I enable that and I return to my sphere inner and I start scaling this, you'll see that the sphere is scaling. The magenta wireframe sphere is changing its size, but the Fusion item isn't updating. It doesn't update until you release uh, your left mouse button and then it updates. So I prefer working this way because it cuts down on lag. When you have a, a large scene with a lot of fusion uh, 
a large fusion setup with a bunch of different fusion sources all interacting. Uh, when you actually scale or move your uh, source meshes, it can get a little bit um, laggy because it's a lot of uh, computing that's going on behind the scenes. So I'll just make this a little bit larger. Now if I come over to the plane and make that visible again, and I press 3 for polygons mode and double click, or first I have to select the plane item, and then 3 for polygons mode. If I double click this plane and control C, and then control V to paste it, and then W to move, and I start moving it, and then I press F to flip the polygons. You can see now we're getting kind of a sandwich effect where the sphere only exists uh, between the two planes. So I can move this to make uh, the sphere section a little bit uh, thicker. And that's just pretty good to know. So then, uh, let's move on to a different fusion item. I'll just make this invisible. We have these cylinders here, which I'll make invisible, and I can actually... We also have this second plane, plane B. Let me actually make a new fusion item, so 5 for items mode. I'll select this thicker cylinder, and I'll press Control F, and I'll choose new fusion. And we'll call this fuse underscore zero two. So I'll click New Fusion with selected meshes. And now I'll subtract this uh, longer inner tube or cylinder from this outer thicker tube. So I'll left mouse button click and drag it onto the green wireframe and I'll choose Apply Subtraction. And now we have, if I make this first cylinder invisible, uh, we have this kind of tunnel effect. And again, I can select the uh, cylinder that's on the inside which is the magenta wireframe, and R for scale in polygons mode, and I can just scale this in the uh, Y, X plane to make a larger hole, and that works perfectly. So let me make this cylinder A visible, and let's actually use this as uh, an intersect trim. So I'll left mouse button click on this uh, shorter cylinder, and drag it onto the green primary, and I'll choose Fusion Apply Intersect. And now we're only getting intersection, or we're only getting a fusion item where this uh, purple wireframe, because purple means intersect uh, in fusion parlance, uh, this purple wireframe, wherever it intersects the other meshes, that's where this is. Uh, that's where the fusion item is happening. So I'll press W for move, and if I move this up we can get this sort of shape, which is pretty interesting. And if I bring in my plane B, and I move this into place in polygons mode, I can actually subtract this plane uh, from this fusion shape. So 5 for items mode, I'll just select this uh, this kind of folded plane, and I'll drag it onto the green wireframe because that is still the primary fusion source, and I'll choose Apply Subtraction. Now you can see we're getting this notch kind of taken out. And if I press W for move uh, in polygons mode, we can start moving this. And you'll see the mesh is updating live, and that's because in this second fusion item, I haven't turned on deferred update. So I'll turn that on, and now when I move the uh, mesh, the fusion item doesn't update until I release the mouse button. So I can just move this down. I can actually rotate this, and just move it back into place, like so. So there's a lot that you can do with this. It's just a really interesting way to work. And again, if I press Control F to bring up the Fusion Pi menu and choose Toggle Source Visibility, uh, we can have a look at the Fusion item without uh, any of the Fusion sources. So let me take this Fusion underscore 2 mesh item and I'm going to go to the Properties, the Fusion Properties, and I'll change the Mesh Mode from Draft to Airtight Final with Parts. And then let me also update the strip items. 
So if you notice, the fusion item has no uh, child items uh, parented to it. And there is something that's part of uh, mesh fusion called strips. And strips occur everywhere uh, two or more of the fusion source meshes intersect. So you get a strip everywhere there's an uh, overlap or intersection. So I'll press Control F to bring up my fusion uh, pie menu, and I'll choose create or update strip items. And now, if I mouse over uh, a section where there is some uh, interaction between uh, two or more of the uh, fusion sources, I'll get a little pre-highlight. So if I click on one of these, uh, we get this fusion strips popover. So I'll just pin that and bring it over to the side. And now I can uh, select all strips. And now I can see all of the strips that are in the scene and I can adjust the size. So I'm going to change the strip width from one millimeter to let's say five millimeters. And we'll see what happens. I can change it to maybe 10 millimeters. So that's looking pretty good. I can change the strip profile so that'll make it a little bit less round and maybe a little bit more uh, of a straight edge. So I can change it from 50% to 15% and that changes that profile and we can adjust the corners. So everywhere uh, there's a junction between uh, two or more strips, such as this area right here, that's considered a corner and we can control that in the fusion strips form uh, where it says strip corners. So usually it's, uh, uh, it's not expanded, so if you click on that it'll expand it. And you can adjust the percentage. So I usually keep this pretty low, uh, but if I, if I put it up to 10% I think by de default it's 20%, but at 10%, if I click on uh, the icon all the way to the right that's very round, uh, it will just completely round out the corners. And if I choose the icon all the way to the left, which is square, uh, it'll keep it pretty sharp. So I like to work somewhere uh, in the middle, usually. I'll choose this uh, option right here. Even that's a little bit too soft for my likings. So I'll move this to 5%, and I'll choose the second from the left. That just gives us a nice uh, middle ground. And of course you can mix and match this. You can have uh, one strip uh, be like 15 millimeters Oops. and that will actually uh, give us a wider strip uh, than this strip here which we can make one millimeter so that's very sharp. So it's just something to keep in mind. This would be a good technique for making a hammer. I can see this being like the part of the hammer that lifts the nail, the, uh, the claw part. Okay, so what if we want this to be an actual editable mesh item and we no longer want it to be procedural? Because if I press three to go into polygons mode and I try to select the polygons, uh, we can't do it. So I have to convert this live fusion item into an actual mesh item. So I have the fusion item selected and I'll come down to dupe and convert to mesh and I have to give it a name. I'll just call this double underscore claw because that's what it reminds me of, uh, the claw of a hammer. I'll click create mesh and now we have our double claw mesh item. So I'll just right click that, edit the color, turn it to none, and bring that to the bottom of the item list. And now with it selected, if I press 3 to go into polygons mode, I can select these polygons. So I can grab these four polygons, B for bevel, bevel that up, and do something like that. And there we go. So that's how you use uh, Fusion and convert the Fusion item to standard polygons. And uh, yeah, so it's definitely something worth exploring. This was just a quick kind of video. Uh, I made my hockey mask video and I thought, you know what, I better do a quick primer on Mesh Fusion just in case there's anybody who doesn't, uh, isn't familiar with it. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, stay tuned to Moto Geeks TV for more videos.